Hey everyone, thanks for joining me once again. Today we're back in Unreal Engine and I'm going to show you uh, an input action that I created for myself. It is called Swap and it enables you to switch between two player controlled pawns. In my game that I'm creating, I have a marble and a bubble and I wanted to be able to switch between the two on the fly in real time. So it took me a little bit to figure out exactly how to do this. So I'm happy to share with you my process. And so in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a second player controlled pawn we're going to create the blueprints to swap between the two. And then at the end, I'm going to add a little bit of an extra input action to that second pawn called float. And it's going to just enable this bubble to float up and down. And we're going to remove the ability to dash instead. That way we have two unique kind of player controlled balls to switch between the two to navigate different environments that I want to create for my own game. So having said that, I'm going to open up the project and we'll go from there. All right, welcome back. We have the second project opened up. Let me switch over so you can see. And this is Just Balls version two. What I'm going to do first is just kind of, uh, I'm going to show you a few things. So I've got my marble blueprint here, similar to the one in my previous project. I've got my controller with no code in it. And I just wanted to remind you how we set this up. This is the um, input mapping context. And let's open up the actions as well. We had the swap one. And we're going to get to float as well. So let's look at them both. They're both digital bools, digital booleans, no other modifiers or triggers. And then in the input mapping context, I've got swap set up as Q and gamepad face button right. Uh, I'll, I'll just remind you float as well as dash are the same. E and E, gamepad, gamepad face button left for both. All right, so that, that's set up properly. I'll just close them. And we're gonna, we're gonna work on the swap function here, but in order to do that, we need a second ball to switch to. So let's do that first. I'll go to my blueprints, find the marble. I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to call it BP bubble. And to visually distinguish the two, let us, I'm just going to open it up. Rename this as bubble. Just to help us stay straight. Uh, let's see here, bubble, and then we're going to change the material so we can distinguish the two. We'll go to glass. I think I had just a temporary material set up here. Where is it? This one, I think. Yeah, I think that's the one. So otherwise it's identical, but what we can do is take out the dash function because I don't want my bubble to dash. So just delete that. And the FOV was related to dash, so we'll delete that as well. This is the buoyancy, oopsie, buoyancy that I haven't shown you yet, but I will eventually. And yeah, that's it. We're going to add a float function here later, but for now we have two things to switch between. We got our marble and our bubble, so let's get into that code here. I'm going to search for my input action swap. Whoa, let's zoom in. Here's input action swap. And let's see, we're going to first of all, use a branch to see if we can swap. So let's create a Boolean over here under our variables, say can swap. And just as a reminder, when you create a variable, you cannot play with it until you've compiled it. So now we've compiled it, we can set a default as true. And we'll drag it in here, say get the value, set it as the condition. And we're off to the races. Once we've done that, we're going to set the value of can swap to false. And we'll go from there. So if we want to swap positions, what we need is our current position. So we're going to say get controlled pawn. And from there, we'll say get the transform. 
get the actor transform. And what I'm interested in is the location. So if you split the pin, you can get this location here. What I don't want to use is this rotation value. So what I'll do is get the camera manager. So you get camera, camera manager. Same thing, get the transform. And split that as well. Da, 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 da. And let's see. From here, we can create another variable, say current pawn. It's going to be of object type pawn. And we'll use the object reference. Compile that, save it. And we're going to pull it out, say, get current pawn. Uh, actually, pardon me. What we want to do is out of get controlled pawn, we want to say set. Set pawn. Set current pawn. Rather than a default value, we're going to set it from the controlled pawn. So now we have a value for current pawn. Um, let's make more variables. We're going to say possible pawns. And this is going to be an object array or a class type array. So if we go down, let's see. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Name string, not that one, class reference, class reference, but we also want it an array. So if you go over to the right, you can see, you can change it to an array. Let's compile it so that we can play with some default values. Just going to hit save. That's another thing. We should always be saving our work, shouldn't we? Save all. Everything is saved. Boop, boop. We want two array elements for this because we have two balls to switch between. Index zero is going to be our default pawn, which is our BP marble. You can, it's near the top here, but you can also search for it if you need to. BP bubble is our second one. So index zero is bubble marble and one is bubble. I'm going to compile and save again. And we need one more variable because we're going to play with the index. So let's say index to spawn. This is going to be an integer of a single type. Switch it up there. Compile. Index to spawn. Default value, I'm going to change it to 1 because we're going to be playing as index 0 and our first swap will be to index 1. So let me drag and get it. Then drag this in. And we're going to say get it. From here, we're going to say set. Nope, not that one. Get. Get a copy. Yeah. Get a copy of this array. And let's hook in our index here. So that we can use this, we're going to say spawn, spawn actor from class. And the class, we've already set it up here. Boom, boom, boom. We're going to break this apart into its components there. We're going to use val uh, sorry, the location here for the transform location. That's going to use the ball's location. And rotation, we're going to use the, from the camera because the camera doesn't rotate. If we use the rotation of the ball, it would go wonky. Trust me. You can see for yourself if you like. Scale is not so important. Collision handling override. I think if you have problems with it, it's probably coming down to here. What you want to do is try to adjust location, but always spawn. If you don't change that, you might have problems with this. Okay, from there, uh, let's see. Choo -choo -choo. Let's see, well, one sec. Just a coffee break here. 
Okay, what we do here is we've spawned in the actor. Now we want to possess it. Possess. Turn value. We're going to possess the one that this came up with. And then I believe we're going to destroy the pawn that was held in this value, or this variable which was set back here based on the one we were controlling. So we've spawned in a new one. We've possessed it. We're going to destroy the old one. And then we'll give a delay. So we can't just do this super frequently. I like three seconds. Um, so now, because there's two balls we want to switch bet between, we're going to use a flip-flop. Flip. Not that one, sorry. A flippity-floppity. There we go. And off the first one, this is our first time through the function, we're going to say, um, set the index, index to spawn. It was one, now it's to zero. And we're going to say set can swap to true. Right? So the first time we went through it, index of spawn was one. So the first time we go through this, we're spawning in index one. Then as we go through, we're going to change the index to zero so that the next time we run it, it's going to spawn in the zero. And we've enabled true to be able to do it again. Um, and we want to kind of rotate between these two options. So we're going to say set index to spawn. This time we're going to put it back to one. So we can switch to the bubble again in the future and then say set the can swap to true as well. So with all of these settings here, this one's important. This should work. But moment of truth, here we go. Got the ball going through this cool like mesh to spline thing. I'll show you how to do this in another video. And here we go, switch. It worked. Boom, it worked, it worked. And this ball, I think has no dash, right? We deleted dash, so I can't dash, but it's moving around like the other one. Switch back to the marble, there we go. Beautiful. I hope you enjoyed this part of the video. If you want to stick around to learn how to make your bubble float, that's what we're going to be doing next. All right. All right, here we go. We're going to set up the float function in our bubble blueprint. Make sure you've got the bubble one selected. And just as a real quick reminder, have your input mapping context set up in advance. We've got the swap one here, sorry, float one here. Let's go back into our bubble and we're gonna search for IA float. And first thing we'll do is create a variable, say, can we float? Can float. Compile, set that to true as a default. I'm seeing um, dash, we can take this out of the bubble because we can't dash at all. Delete, dash force, delete, FOV stuff, delete, delete. Okay, move, jump, buoyancy. Okay, good. So we're gonna grab can float and we're gonna plug it into a branch. And then as we always do, we'll say set can float to false. Then all we have to do is add an impulse to the bubble. Its direction is going to be straight up. So let's build a variable, a float type, say float force. There we go, compile. I don't know, I think a value of something like 5,000. 
might be okay. Maybe more. Let's start with that. We'll grab it. Promote to variable now. No, we won't do that. It's going to split this out so I can put it in directly into the Z. There we go. Really, all you have to do after that is say set a delay. Delay. For how often you want to enable the float. So I'll say 0.5 seconds. You might want it longer or shorter, up to you. But then we'll say set can float to true. So you can do it again. That's pretty simple. You could add some other things, but I think that's good enough. Let's compile, save it, uh, comment it out, say float. And since this one's unique to the bubble, I'm going to color it. Um, let's color it something different. Compile, save. And floating's not working. Right, because it should be the dash button. Hmm. Let's figure out why. Hmm. You know what? Maybe this float force isn't strong enough. That's why we're not seeing it even get off the ground. Let's try 10,000. Compile. Try again. Switch. Okay, that's what it was. We could barely get off the ground. What we could also do is change the mass of our bubble if we don't want to mess with float force so, so much. Go over to the viewport, or it doesn't matter, I guess. Select the bubble. Where is it? Should be under physics. And remember, we duplicate it from marble. Marble was 50. Let's change this down to, say, 10. That's one fifth the weight. I betcha we see a, a difference now. Switch. Oh, there we go. Since we're using mass for all these things. Oh, man. Maybe I should change it a few things. So I'm moving it around quite quickly. It doesn't feel like a marble or a bubble. See how as I move in the air even, I'm getting some spin. Cool. All right, that's it for today. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Today we covered uh, being able to swap between two player controlled objects and giving one of them the float function. If you have any questions at all, leave them in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. All right, take care everybody. Thank you.